what is it that really makes an economy run? What makes it healthy? What creates a lot of jobs, a lot of incomes, a lot of toys to buy? What is the key to making an economy run really smoothly, very healthily, and with benefits for as many people as possible? Before we get into that, let me ask you this question. How important is your income level to you? In most capitalistic societies, uh, particularly you see it in the media, people driving big cars, buying big houses, it is often viewed as the most important determinant of how happy you are, how successful you are, and how hard you work. Now, I'm not saying this is necessarily the complete statement of how important income is. Philosophically, there are a lot of other things that are perhaps more important than that. But most folks would agree that it, all of us need at least some minimal level of income if we're going to live some sort of a quality life. The interesting thing about income is you don't have any income until somebody buys something. Unless you've got a rich uncle or a sugar daddy, you and I have to go out and earn our money. So the key to a strong economy is what? Spending. If nobody's spending any money, businesses don't have any customers, they don't need employees, you and I don't have jobs. I had one other illustration I was going to throw in here to illustrate how important spending is to our economy. But I looked over the videos of the people of Walmart and decided, no, we won't use that. In macroeconomics, we talk about four categories of spending. Consumption spending by households, that's you and I going out buying beer and pizza or dishwashers or whatever, automobiles. It's spending by businesses as they buy equipment, computers, trucks. We call that, and it's a unique term in macroeconomics, we call it investment spending. We mean the spending by businesses. More on that in a minute. The third category of spending we talk about in macroeconomics, it refers to government spending. This is by governments buying everything from schools and roads to airports, to military, etc. And then the fourth and last category of spending we look at in economics and macroeconomics is called net exports. How much money do our foreign trading partners spend buying goods and services from us? Now the key to all four of these flows of spending, think about it, all of these spending flows create jobs in our country. And that's what we're looking at. That's why spending is so important. So just a little bit further, we, we express it this way, and this is an equation you hopefully will never forget if you've ever had macroeconomics because you'll see it a lot. The total spending on our economy, consumption, investment, government, and net exports, is what we call gross domestic product. That's our GDP. Ideally, that's going to grow 3 or 4% per year in a healthy, developed economy. Sometimes it doesn't do that, and a lot of macroeconomics looks into why not and what can we do about it. What is it that makes GDP grow every year? Well, here's some thoughts or ideas. First of all, our population increases naturally every year. With more people, they're going to be doing more spending, buying more goods, buying more services. But we also increase what we can buy with better technology. Technology makes for a better quality of life for most fo folks most of the time. Another key to growing GDP is that we be able to produce more. So our productivity as a nation, that is, how much uh, can our workforce produce? And this, of course, will be based partly on their, their technology that they have available, but it will also be based on their skills and their education and their experience. So in economics, we focus a great deal on productivity and how is it performing over time. And then another more subjective element, but a 
a very important one into growing the economy, it depends upon the opportunities that are available to people and their optimism and, and positive expectations to want to go forward and create new businesses, create new products, find new jobs, and do they have the opportunities to do that. So these are some of the things that kind of circulate in the background as we talk about our economy and how is it doing and how can we make it better. Let's take just a brief moment and look at these different elements here. Oh, by the way, I almost forgot. The policies by our government will influence things like technological research and development, education, opportunity. Okay, so policies by government can be very instrumental in whether or not our GDP is going to grow at a healthy rate and create enough jobs and enough incomes for us into the future. Let's spend just a minute and talk about the four different elements of, of spending. Consumption spending in the United States accounts for up to 70 percent of the, the total spending in the economy. That means you and I as consumers, as households, are the absolute biggest element, the critical element to keeping our economy running. If we're spending money, businesses are doing well and good things follow from that. But our consumption spending depends upon several things. How much money do we earn? How much other money do we bring in maybe that we don't earn but we're entitled to, maybe financial aid or social security? How much taxes do we pay? How much wealth have we accumulated over our lives? As we get wealthier, we feel more comfortable spending more money. We look at interest rates as a factor that affects consumption spending because consumption spending many times means borrowing money to buy an automobile or a house. And sometimes if you can make a high interest rate on your investments, you save money more than you spend it. And another, again, somewhat subjective kind of grayish element is the psychological outlook of consumers as they look towards the future. When they're optimistic, they tend to spend more money. When they become frightened or pessimistic, they tend to spend less. And all, as always, we ask, can we as policymakers or influencers in our communities and in our states, can we put these forces to work in a positive way? Consumption spending 70%. Let's go on. Investment spending by businesses. Note the three categories here. We're talk about, talking about businesses spending money on their inventories, on their capital goods, that is their equipment and machinery, and on new construction of buildings or, or homes before they're purchased by the homeowner. Okay? This is business spending. Remember, all of this spending creates jobs. And the level of business spending is going to depend on several factors. How profitable have they been? And how much of their profits do they still have available? How much help does government give them in the way of subsidies? We know in agriculture many times our government helps out the farmers through the tough times trying to soften the blow from the ups and downs in the economy. Businesses judge how much they're going to spend also on their taxes. Taxes are another cost. They also look at interest rates because they do a lot of their business on borrowed money. And there's a psychological aspect to businesses just like consumers. You're not going to build a new factory or produce a whole lot of goods if you don't think you're going to have customers. Now, given these things that work out here, can we, again, as policymakers or influencers, put these forces to work in a positive way? So that's consumption spending, 70%, investment spending, 17% of our total economy. Now, government spending, 18% of total spending. And this means government spending at the federal or national level, but also at the state level and local level, cities and counties and school boards and such as that. This level of government spending, spending is going to depend upon how much money they have available based on the taxes they raise or receive. It's going to depend on what the voters really want and whether they're willing to pay for it. And there may be some exogenous factors, outside factors that come into play once in a while, such as a war or a catastrophic, catastrophic event like a, a hurricane or something like that. These factors may influence government spending. Can we put these forces to work? Well, obviously so in the first case. 
um, maybe through influence and persuasion in the second case, but too often the, we have exogenous factors that occur that we cannot control. So a lot of debate in macroeconomics is how much should governments be spending and what should their role be, how large should their role be in our economy. Recount now, consumption spending 70, business spending 17, that's 87, government spending 18, that's 97, ooh, that's 105. That's 105 percent. How can we spend more than 100 percent? Well, let's take up the next slide. When we talk about the foreign sector, we're talking about all of the products and services we sell to our trading partners overseas or abroad, but we subtract from that however much we buy from them. So if we're buying, for example, automobiles from Germany, that's money we're not spending in our own country creating jobs in our own country. When we sell exports, if we sell an automobile to Germany, that's money coming in creating jobs in the United States. So we net the two against each other. What are our total imports? What are our total exports? What are they on balance? And we see that for the most part we tend to import more than we export and this is a drag down on our economy to the tune of about 5% of our total spending. But before you get too negative about that, remember that we're buying lots of good products from overseas. Folks tend to like some of those things. We look at some of the factors that affect exports and imports, and I'll let you read through those, but some of those things we can control or influence, and a lot of others we can't. 